Good morning. Boker Tov. Uh, for those uh, who still doesn't know, there is also no sign of uh, happiness in my country because of yesterday's soccer uh, match. Uh, we predicted we will pass easily through Baku, Azerbaijan, but we split. One, one, and uh, that means that uh, you could be second in the world officially, but you have to invest on daily basis to be prepared to achieve your goals, uh, even in, uh, in, in this field of uh, uh, our conference. It's great to be here, and uh, indeed uh, an honor to address uh, this prestigious annual gathering. The nature of threat of uh, terrorism and the way it challenges our values, our cohesion and our way of life beckons us to unite our skills, expertise and the knowledge. Each of us here, I am certain, can make a significant contribution. I think uh, it's uh, fitting that this conference be traditionally scheduled uh, to coincide with the commemoration of 9-11 terror attacks in the United States. This vile act has had a profound impact on the world. As we remember and mourn the 9-11 victims, we should also reflect upon the victims of terrorism here in Israel and around the world. For most of my professional career, in one capacity or another, security has been a top priority for me. It is hard to imagine another government portfolio more demanding or calling for tougher decisions to be made as we seek to keep our people safe from harm. It is a responsibility I have always taken very seriously. Terrorism continues to be a formidable security challenge at the state, regional, and global level. And unfortunately, there is a little indication that uh, that will change any time soon. It constitutes a major threat to security across Europe and is a serious concern in my own country, Croatia. Its intent uh, is uh, to spread fear and make us uh, feel unsafe in our homes and public spaces. This is why I think we should pay particular attention to how terrorism affects public attitudes, perceptions and concerns. For a long time, we have known that this would be a critical battleground. Terrorist groups and their ideological supporters have also shown a remarkable ability in adopting new social networking trends and developing technology. Empowered by the internet and social media, terrorist groups have been able to attract new recruits and inspire individual acts of terror in seemingly distant places. Lately, right-wing and left-wing extremists have used similar digital platforms. Intelligence reports have signaled a rise in numbers of radicalized individuals, a claim supported by several independent studies. There are many more dangerous individuals around today than there were at the time of 9-11. As a security threat, terrorism has evolved and morphed into a transcending challenge that defies time and space. It seems not to have aged over the years, and there is a hardly a corner of the world immune to its uh, devastating consequences. Just as 9-11 uh, ushered in a new era, so too did the emergence of ISIS and its attempt to establish a caliphate. 
ISIS land grab and unique blend of terror, insurgency, and uh, criminality attributed to its appeal to a wide variety of individuals across the globe. Men, women, and children came in by the thousands, including a handful of Croatian citizens. Others were ready to support their cause by other means, including spreading its ideology, ideology online, rising funds, and even plotting terrorist acts in their own home countries. It has also been successful as a finance-like promoter of its violent ideology to other fragile states and unstable regions from across North America to South Central Asia. In the EU, we have been particularly concerned about its uh, impact uh, on the radicalization of our citizens and the decision by many to travel abroad and become foreign terrorist fighters. Now, after ISIS setbacks on the battlefield, our focus shifts to returning fighters. The number of returnees varies across European countries, but uh, a fraction of an uh, estimated 5,000 who that went to fight in Syria and Iraq. The fear is that some would take part in radicalizing uh, F, uh, others or, even worse, become active in planning terrorist attacks. Radicalized homegrown militants were behind many recent terrorist attacks across Europe. Europe is also wrestling with ethno-nationalist and separatist terrorist attacks, as well as with right-wing extremists that have exploited public concern over perception of excessive migration flows to Europe. And it comes with a price. The July 2011 Breivik uh, case in Norway and the March 2019 Christchurch mosque shooting in New Zealand are stark reminders of terrorism's alter ego. But in our counter-terrorism efforts, we also have made tremendous progress, both individually and collectively. The fight against terrorism has bolstered solidarity and improved cooperation among nations. Our law enforcement agencies and intelligence services are sharing information and working together like never before. Meanwhile, we see more and more thwarted terrorist plots. We are in this fight for the long haul. That implies be cautious when mulling over instant remedies or game-winning objectives so-called, of course, focusing more on risk reduction rather than risk elimination, raising awareness, being vigilant, and making our societies more resilient. After some of the most heinous attacks in Europe, our communities have shown a remarkable capacity to come together, heal, and move on. This says a lot about the character of our free societies. Nevertheless, our citizens expect more substantive action on fighting terrorism. Our behind-the-scene activities and clandestine operations, while effective, are not enough. We need to take action that is uh, tangible. We need to make people feel genuinely safer. Security is uh, as much about feeling uh, safe as it uh, is about uh, being safe. In Europe, the security of our people is a top priority. Collectively, we are doing more to reduce the risk of terrorist attacks than uh, we have ever done before. Our preventive 
and counterterrorism measures include organizational or structural initiatives, new directives and legislation, allocation of funds and more resources, improved external border control, private public sector cooperation, inter-service cooperation, and information sharing arrangements. In particular, our law enforcement efforts across the EU have been beefed up with the tighter laws and now cover a wider range of terrorist-related offenses. Taken together, our efforts are aimed at denying terrorists the time and space they need to operate in. Now let me turn to Southeast Europe, region from which I come. Uh, Southeast Europe, uh, although not having experienced uh, anything similar to the attacks we have seen in Western Europe, is nevertheless particularly vulnerable. Three key factors characterize the region's unique vulnerability. First, the armed conflicts of 90s, tense ethnic relations, and unresolved political issues create a fragile environment. Access to dangerous weapons and uh, illicit trafficking networks is particularly worrisome. A sense of stagnating progress, lack of uh, economic opportunities, and slowed reforms loom fervently in some communities. Second, Southeast Europe has been a geographical gateway to the West. It is one of the preferred illegal migration routes to Western Europe. It has also been a geopolitical stage where several external actors have been competing with the region's Euro-Atlantic aspirations. Such efforts look to undermine reforms or better yet, stop or stall the accession of countries in the region to the EU and NATO. Third, different forms of radicalism and violent extremism are prevalent throughout the region. It has been estimated that uh, over 1,000 foreign fighters from the Western Balkans joined the ranks of ISIS in Syria and Iraq. We believe that about one-third of them have since returned home. One of my main fears is that uh, the countries in the region may be unprepared or institutionally ill-equipped to deal with these returnees. Many have been jailed, although their terms are never long. And uh, as studies have shown elsewhere, instead of being rehabilitated in prison, these individuals risk being further radicalized. Without adequate de-radicalization programs in the region, law enforcement and uh, security agencies already overburdened are left on their own to deal with this problem. Now let me tell you a little bit about our approach to counterterrorism. We take the threat of terrorist attack very seriously in Croatia, be it protecting our citizens, upholding our commitment to solidarity with the EU, working with NATO, or cooperating with our neighbors and partners well beyond our frontiers. Our counterterrorism efforts begin at our very doorstep. We believe each of us has been primary responsibility to provide for our own security. This responsibility cannot be deferred elsewhere. However, admittedly, we concede that no country can deal with terrorism and other transnational security challenges alone. As a popular tourist destination, which I'll uh, introduction 
uh, said, and I appreciate uh, his visit uh, to Croatia and uh, his right. Many Israelis and much more than years before are coming in Croatia. We do not want to leave anything uh, to chance when it comes uh, to security and safety. Regarding terrorism, we have a zero tolerance gauge. But we were not exactly satisfied with how we approach national security. Our contemporary security challenges required a whole government approach, a private public sector partnership and better management of assets and resources. As a result, just two years ago, we introduced new legislation and established a homeland security system to do just that. It was designed to help us deal with the full spectrum of security challenges on all hazards and all risks approach. So whether facing a run-of-the-mill civil contingency like flooding or wildfires, or having to deal with conflict, migration, or cyber terrorism, we now have a flexible and adaptive all-encompassing platform. A national coordination body brings all the relevant uh, private and public, national or local level stakeholders to the table. Counterterrorism is a high-ranking item on our homeland security agenda. The threat of a terrorist attack in Croatia is real, although the likelihood at the moment is not high. But given the Euro-Atlantic affiliation and geographic proximity, not to mention abruptness with uh, which international circumstances quickly change, we cannot afford to let our guard down. One of our main concerns involves the transit, uh, transiting uh, across uh, our borders by foreign nationals considered a security risk. Complicating matter is the vast illegal human trafficking networks throughout the Balkans used by irregular migrants trying to make their way it, into Western Europe. In the past, terrorists have been known to hide among large crowds of refugees and migrants. Today we have reinforced our border control uh, with timely information exchange, increased patrols, and new technology. Cooperation with uh, our allied and partner services is the back bedrock of uh, our efforts, in particular solidarity trust and the common understanding of a shared danger, we all face distinguish our relationship with the uh, Europe, European and US partners. Cooperation not only involves joint CT operations and information sharing, but also training and working on joint projects. In conclusion, I want to leave you with uh, some final thoughts. Terrorism will not simply go away one sunny day. Its nature may evolve and change. Its uh, motivating factors will vary. Its underlying cause can easily shift, but the fear, pain, and suffering it causes will be all too familiar. We will need to work together more closely and I'm not just talking about state to state or government to government level, but also about building private-public partnerships. I mean crossing over traditional boundaries between national authorities, experts, uh, scholars, activists, and corporate leaders. Combating terrorism requires an understanding of uh, its many fields of battle. As in the real world, terrorism and radical ideologies needs to be dealt with uh, in the online virtual world of cyberspace. We need a leading social media industry on our side when it comes to terrorism prevention. 
And uh, let's not talk about winning or losing when it comes to combating terrorism. I don't see any value in such thinking. It is impossible to know or to think in such terms. As I mentioned earlier, we are it for the long haul. Raising public awareness, building resilient communities, and assuring our, our intelligence and police services have the necessary tools, resources, and support is the best way forward. Again, I appreciate having this opportunity to speak and hope the conference fulfills all your expectations. Thank you very much.